chapter 13 is where we're going to go today for just a couple of verses. Hebrews chapter 13. If you have it, you can say amen. amen. Hebrews in chapter 13, verse 1, the Bible says to us, let brotherly love continue. You might say, I thought this was Mother's Day. Well, it is Mother's Day, but nothing touches a mother's heart to, then more than to know that her, her children are loving one another. Let, let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers. For by doing so, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Let brotherly love continue. Continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Turn to your neighbor on the right and say, neighbor, I do think you're strange, but I'm going to love you anyhow. Turn to your other neighbor say, neighbor, I do think you're strange, but I'm anointed to love you. And I love you in spite of you sometimes. Now, y'all pull out whatever title you want. I just threw five or six at you. And you call it what you want, but it is going to be about love today. Father, we thank you for your presence and your glory, and we thank you for your power. We thank you for your preservation. Your hand has been on our lives, and we thank you. We thank you that you have the plan, even when we don't know the plan. Even when our plans fail, your plans prevail. We thank you for that today. And I pray that your word would just talk in here today. That you would find those that are reaching for you. Those that are on the edge of their seat. Those that are saying, I'm hungry. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Do it in this place. Bless those that are not even in the building, but they're online watching. I pray that you bless them today. Let your word find us. Fill us. And move us forward. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. Amen and amen. On your way down, hit somebody. Tell them I told you you were strange. To all of you who are visiting with us for the first time, I'm grateful to have you in the house with us as well. And we're so glad that, that you are worshiping the Lord with us. In in the word of God, in chapter, if you really backed up and um, just for the sake of time, I just read those two verses, but in chapter 12 uh, of the book of Hebrews, Paul is admonishing us to pursue God, not just to, not just to get God and, and be satisfied with whatever portion you got and say things have changed in my life now. I love God. He loves me. No, he is admonishing us to pursue God. He's also admonishing us to pursue peace. And here's another one. He's admonishing us to pursue holiness. Somebody holler holiness. holiness. Say it again like your, like your mama would say it. Holiness, holiness or hell. <laughs> one, pastor, where are you at? There's a pastor here visiting Olds, Pastor Olds, where are you? Hey, God bless y'all. It just hit me. I'm so glad to have y'all worshiping the Lord with us today. Uh, they are incredible pastors, and they have set aside this day and come to worship with us. Can you make, make them feel real welcome? We're so grateful that you are here. So let me go, let me go back to this. Um, but Paul is telling us that, that, that we are to pursue holiness. Holiness is... It, 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 it is not just something that's going to come to you. You have to make a, a decision in your life that holiness is the way that I'm going. Y'all quiet. Um, but, and we don't like to talk about holiness today, but we're going, we, we do talk in this church. We're going to talk about holiness because the Bible says without holiness, no man can see God. And, and if you don't see God, you can't see your purpose. And if you can't see your purpose, you can't see your destiny. And if you can't, you can't see your destiny, then you don't know the, what he has for your life. So it is imperative that we live a life of a holiness. It's old fashioned, but slap somebody and tell them it works. It works. 
He tells us that we have to lay aside every weight and every sin, that, which means that there is a difference between the two. He said, lay aside the weight, whatever it is that could potentially hold you down and cause you not, be, not to be able to run your race. He says, I want you to lay that down. Anything that's so heavy that, that it's gonna hinder you from crossing the finish line, I want you to lay it down. And also, I, wanna, I want you to set aside the weight. And notice he didn't just say, I want you to set aside uh, I, I mean the sin. He, he didn't just say, I want you to set aside sin. He said, but I want you to set aside the sin. Oh, quite. But there is a sin that all of us, it's specific for you. It's specific to you. Like you could hold up a Dr. Pepper in front of me and it would not move me at all. I'm not going to reach for it. There's nothing in me. I have nothing in me for it. I don't like it. I don't want it. But if you set a Diet Coke in front of me, there will be a war within my members. I want to do right. But I would struggle with that because, which by the way, praise God, it's been oh, a little over five years. I have not had a soda in these lips or a pop, wherever you're from. I don't know where you're from, but, uh, but I was strongly addicted, I think, to my Diet Coke or Coke Zero. But it, it, it was specific for me. Now, I'm being funny about that, but there is a sin that when, that, that when you, you know, when you get in the, you think you're delivered, and then you get in the vicinity of it. And you're like, well, what is that? What do I feel? What's calling me? Whatever it is, don't answer the phone. Because the sin, God says, I want you to lay it aside. That's not my message today, but somebody needed to hear that. So there you go. And he closes out chapter 12 and he opens up chapter 13. And he presents us with, with some commands. And, and he presents us with some things that deal with the social life of the believer. And he instructs us. And he says, let brotherly love continue. Now, it's interesting to me that as he, that he refers to love as something that is brotherly. But, but I believe that that is something that is very appropriate because it reminds us that we as Christians, we can't really call ourselves Christians without loving one another and loving the brethren. The, the spirit of Christianity is the spirit of love. Have you ever seen unhateful Christians? I mean, hateful Christians. And you're like, how can you be a Christian? You're so hateful. I mean, it's, it's, it's just t terrible. But he's saying to us, that, that, that we got to cultivate love towards one another in, in, in our midst because the Bible says that by this, by what? By love shall they know that we are his disciples. As a matter of fact, Galatians 5 and 22 says that the fruit of the spirit is love, okay? So if you are loveless, you're fruitless. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't, I don't care about any of that. It, we, were, we will know you by your love. So therefore, one of the indications that you are a fruitful Christian is that you can love me even in spite of me. Look at somebody and tell them, you got to love me. <laughs> tell somebody else, you got it, you got it. And what I want you to notice here is I want you to notice the apostle's language uh, because he doesn't say, let us have brotherly love. He says, let brotherly love continue. So clearly they are already operating in it, you know, because that, that's why he said it like he said it. You're operating in it, but, but it is equally as clear to me that he feels that there is a measure of, of, of danger that it might begin to deteriorate. 
deteriorate. And so he warns us and he admonishes us that if we're going to continue in, in brotherly love, that, that we must let, which means that we must allow and we must permit and we mu there, there's a dying process in there at times because I don't, I don't feel like loving every day, but I gotta, I gotta let the love of Christ come forward anyhow. And then he goes on and he begins to admonish us uh, not uh, admonish us not to not to just be careful how we love each other and treat each other, but then he tells us, be careful how you treat strangers. Be careful how you treat them because, and, and what that means right there is be careful how you treat different types of people. Be careful how you treat uh, uh, uncommon people for thereby uh, some of you have entertained angels unaware. What are angels? Well, let me tell you what they're not limited to. They are not limited to two winged creatures that are flying in and out of the room or wherever, uh, but it's not limited to that. Angels are messengers. Yeah. Okay, angels are, are messengers who bring divine direction into your life. Sometimes God can use your child as an angel. You, you've been praying and searching, looking for answers, and you're, you're trying to figure out what in the world, what am I going to do? And your, your child will walk into the room and say something that will trigger you, and you'll be like, God, that's the answer. That's what I am looking for. Angels are, though they are, there are angels that we are encamped around uh, 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 about with angels. There are, I believe that there are angelic beings, but however, uh, I, I don't limit it to those two winged creatures. Uh, an angel is a, a master, a pastor is, can be an angel because we deliver the word of the Lord into your life. Um, uh, angels are divine instructors, instructions that come from instructors. Uh, angels can be those people that we cross path, paths with and we may never see them again in our life. But when we crossed paths, paths with them, uh, it changed everything about angels hold keys to our destiny and they hold keys to, to our, 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 pl our plan and to the voice of God in our life. Paul is saying, be careful how you treat them. Be careful that you don't just become familiar with them. Be careful that you don't take them for granted. Be careful that you don't just become common with those voices in your life. Because the minute that you begin to perceive them as common, they can no longer do in your life what God has assigned them to do in your life. Amen. So whenever God gives you a voice, whenever he puts something or somebody in your spirit that wakes up those things that are inside of you, you, you know, just the, the sound of their voice, it, it wakes up gifts and callings that you are pregnant with it, and you don't even know that they're there. Uh, whenever God gives you that kind of person, cherish them and treasure them because they are a gift from God to you because why because they are they are a sign to unlock the greatness that is inside of you many of you are are listening to me today and you got greatness on the inside and it's locked up inside of you but when you hear that right voice when you you're pointed in that right direction all of a sudden things that were sound asleep they begin to wake up so look at somebody and tell them it's time for you to wake up your greatness perfect example of that is like Naomi and Ruth. You, you know their story. Uh, they, they, they came together and Naomi, she came into Ruth's life to induce her destiny. Ruth was, was born in a, in a counterproductive culture and, and she was actually, Ruth was bigger than where she was born. She was bigger than where, have you ever felt like I'm bigger than this? Anybody ever felt that? You're in an atmosphere and you're like, I, I love everybody here, but I feel like I'm so much bigger than where I am. I have 
felt like that on many occasions in my life. And that's a clue. That's a clue that God has placed some. I don't mean that in an arrogant way. Like I'm better than this. That's not what I'm talking about. But there's something in you that says I'm bigger than where I am. What does that mean? I stop being where I am and I stop doing what I'm doing? Absolutely not. You keep on doing what you're doing. You keep on being big like God has made you big. And you don't just walk away and abandon it. But you keep doing whatever your hands find to do. You do that thing with all of your might. And you be faithful over it. Because if you're faithful over a few things. He said I will make you ruler over many. And we got too many people wanting to be ruler over many. But not wanting to be faithful over the few. And so she was bigger than where she was. And God sent Naomi through circumstances and, and made her come face to face with Ruth. And by their connection, she induced Ruth's destiny. To induce something means to activate it. It means to set that thing in motion. It means to persuade somebody. It means to argue you into your purpose. You come here Sunday after Sunday and I argue with you and I argue you into your purpose. Yeah. The other pastors get up here, they argue you in. I'm, I'm not talking about an argument that makes you mad. Or, or an argument that, and sometimes you might get mad. I, I've been there too. Uh, but I, I'm not talking about an argument that, that makes you angry. I'm talking about an argument that makes you stretch. There is, there is. That's what the word of the Lord is supposed to do. It is supposed to make something in you stretch and say, I, I can't. A good leader will leave you with stretch marks. I said a good leader will leave you with stretch marks. You might not look at somebody and tell them, I got stretch marks, okay. I'm telling you. Why? Because they stretch your thinking. They stretch your mentality. They stretch your faith. You come in here and you hear somebody say something uh, uh, about faith. And you are like, God, I'm at the end of my rope. I've done everything I know to do. I've done what your word says. And it doesn't look like it worked for me. And then the pastor gets up and starts preaching. Oh, ye of little faith. You got to, and your faith begins to stretch. And, and you might say, but it, it just didn't work out like I had planned for it to work out. And so I'm, I'm discouraged about it. Listen, let me tell you something. Even when it doesn't work out like you thought it was going to work out, when you do it like God says do it, he honors your faith. Look at somebody and say, do it anyway. Keep on doing. Well, I asked God to be here on Friday by 3 o'clock. I asked him to be money in my bank account, and it didn't happen for me. So what, what, what are you going to do? Just stop believing God? No, because we're going to believe God. That's what we do. Well, I prayed for somebody, and they didn't get healed. Well, God, you got to remember, is a sovereign God. And anytime you try to invoke your will over a sovereign God in somebody else's life, that's witchcraft. So you have, to, you have to pray. You have to do what we do. But then you have to leave the results into the hand of God. And don't allow the enemy to start getting in your spirit and start talking and saying, God ain't faithful. See, you did everything they said. Step one, two, three, four, five. And you still didn't get the result. Well, you know what? I might have not got the result, but I did honor the principle of God. And God blesses you for that. I said God blesses you for that. And what you got to do is you got to walk out of the situation and say, now, Lord, I don't, I don't want to get upset with you. I'm not going to be upset with you. And if I'm upset with you in the slightest, create in me a clean heart, oh God. Woo, that's what we have to do. Because when you do all of the principles, God blesses you. And it may not be, you may not be blessed with the outcome that you asked for. But he still blesses the principles that you put into practice. And so, so God will put people in your life that will stretch you. Come on, somebody just stretch real good with me right now. Go ahead, stretch really, really good. Get that stretch out. Y'all need that. 
Thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that little idea right there to help them wake up. <laughs> so God will put leaders in your life and, and he will put them in there to free you from limitations. Uh, he'll put people in your life to say, so, so that's, that's where you're hitting at right now. And, and you'll come in here and you'll hear somebody say something and something will come alive in you. And you'll be like, I, I can believe God for that. I can do that. And so you start stretching. And, and the whole point is so that God can lift every restriction that has been placed on your life. Some people are dealing with generational curses that have placed restrictions on their family's name for ages and ages and ages. I came to tell you somebody has got to break that thing and it might as well be you. You ain't gonna break it, just patty caking. I said it's gotta break. It's been there too long. Somebody's gotta stand up instead of succumbing to it. You got to defy it and say, not another day, not another child, not another generation, not in my house, not in our name we break that limitation off yes we will go to college yes we will graduate yes we will have double honors yes we will have the degrees yes we will because we're breaking the mental confinements that's been on our family all of us we break the religious traditions that's tried to hold us back and only let us know God in the outer court devil you're a liar I'm going into the holy place. I'm going into the holy of holies. I'm going behind the veil because I know how to look at somebody and tell them break every one of them. Break every trap. You, there has to be something in you that's defiant. There has to be something in you that says, just because you didn't make it over don't mean I ain't going to make it over. I love you and I'm heading on over. And when I get over here, I'm going to pray that you will have what it takes. You are stronger than what you think you are. Quit letting people manipulate you. Quit letting people tell you you'll never have this and you'll never be that. Girl, your mama didn't have anything. Well, you know what? I'm blessed to have had my mama so watch me go a little bit further at least than my mama did and then I'm gonna turn around and reach back and say come on mama you're stronger than you think I get tickled at people who get offended at people and and they're like oh I just don't want to be in their presence I'm not gonna oh they're gonna be there I'm not gonna be there who you just gave them so much power Stop giving your power away. When people, when people have that kind of a hold on you and they limit you and they restrict you, you are giving your power away. So at some point in your life, God will open up something in you and, and, and you'll get a window of opportunity and you'll be like, I'm not going, that's it. I'm not, go, I'm not going to be stuck there the rest of my life. I'm coming out of this thing. And you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to model the way to come out of it because there are some kids back there who are watching me and I'm going to show them, hey, you can come out. You can come out if you want to get out. You can come out. And you don't have to have an attitude. You don't have to be bitter. You can come out with clean hands and a pure heart. You can forgive everybody that's tried to hold you down, that didn't have a vision. They couldn't help it. They couldn't see it. And they chose not to rise above it. But look at somebody and tell them, I dare you to get up. I dare you to get up out of it. So God will send us people in our lives and he will cause them to stretch us and to believe for things that we never saw. He'll cause, may not be your bloodline, but he'll cause friendships to come in to your life just for the purpose of putting an edge on you because iron sharpeneth iron. I said iron sharpeneth iron. So he'll, he'll put people in your life to help you live better, to think better to dream better, to function better, function on another level completely. And whenever that happens, those that know you and that are familiar with you, uh, those, those who are like, like they're your family, and, and they're gonna be like, who do you think you are? You, you don't forgot, you, you forgot who you are. Yes, I did, and I'm glad I forgot because I got an opportunity to be more. 
I got an opportunity to be more. And I'm going to take it with all that I got. So the Bible says that, that when, we, when we are free, that God gives, he sets us in a place where we can think different and believe different and, 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 and do absolutely different. And ye shall know. How do you do that, though? Because you know the truth. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall Okay, let's get that right. How many of y'all think it should be make? How many of y'all think set? The truth is going to make you free. Set implies that it's inst instantaneous. But make you free implies that it's a process. Look at somebody tell them, respect the process. <laughs> You got to respect the process. If you're going to have longevity in life, you've got to respect the process. The process is what ensures that you are prepared to bear the weight of the promise. The reason that the promise is not going to ruin me is because I've been through a process that says I can bear up under this and it's not going to change me. God, you can give me a hundred thousand dollars because I was faithful with a hundred. Lord, you can give me a thousand because I was faithful over a hundred. It's the process. When you go through the process and you take it and make it, that means no matter what God does for you, you're going to be all right you're not going to get out here and completely go crazy and every now and then God will set somebody in your life and he'll put them on your path to show you that there is what am I saying I'm saying that there's more to you there is more in you than meets the eye if you'd have saw me 40 we've been married 47 years if you'd have saw me 47 years ago you would have been like why is he marrying her you know, why, why, why in the world? She's quite, so quiet and so shy and he's so loud and he's boisterous. And he wants to walk into a room and you see his clothes before he gets in there. And I'm like, just give me brown. Just give me the, anything black or anything brown. That's my, not today though. <laughs> I brought the sunshine. <laughs> But anyway, there's more to you than meets the eye. And when God sends those people into your life to tell you that and wake up those things that you would, and, and get you thinking on another level, sometimes you have to give up who you are, or I'm sorry, wait, 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 who you were so that you can become who you are. Now, it, it, and it, it's, 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 it's not always easy. And, and there's a decision that has to be made. Look at somebody and say, do you know who you are? You know who you are? All right. Let me say something here uh, at, at the risk of being misunderstood. When God sends an angel, a messenger, a leader, a teacher, a, a pastor, a mentor into your life, uh, they, may, they may be able to help you to understand who you are. But here's what they can't do. They can't tell you what you have. Yeah. I don't care who it is. They can't. You, you might be help, me, help me to understand uh, 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 who, who I am, but you have no idea what I have because you weren't there when he created me and he made me, when I was fearfully and wonderfully made. When he, before he pushed me out of eternity and put my feet into time, he tucked stuff in me. Yeah. Tucked little things inside of me. And it, it's like one of those time release capsules. You know, you, you, you swallow it right now, but five, 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 uh, 50 minutes from now, all of a sudden there's a new release. Yeah. Why? Because it's time released. Let me tell you something. When God... Put, when he made you, he put little things inside of you and they aren't destined to come out all at once. Yes. Woo. And you can't see them right now, but tell somebody they're there anyhow. They're there anyhow. 
You would have never known I was a preacher. You would have never known I could be a leader. You would have never known I could be confrontational. You would have never known. This is a completely different person. People that know me then, they look at me now and say, my God, where did this lady come from? I'm telling you, I was there all the time. All of that was in me, but it wasn't until somebody woke those things up. Somebody's like, I wish they'd go back to sleep. They ain't going back to sleep. It's only going to get greater and greater and greater and greater until the perfect day. I want to know what's inside of you that's about to wake up. Does anybody think that you have anything inside of you that is about to wake up? So they may, your, your mentor may look at you and, and say, baby, this is who you are. That's what, that's what my mama would say. She'd say, Cheryl, you're born for this. Well, I, I, I went to her when I, we were pastoring in, in uh, North Carolina and Bishop Jiggs had contacted us and asked us to pray about coming to Texas, which is an incredible move. It's the greatest, one of the greatest moves I ever made in my life. But I was scared because sometimes when everything's comfortable, you, you kind of give up on what's out there because that comfort zone is comfortable. They call it comfort, a comfort zone for a reason. And I, so we were a little bit nervous, but mostly I was, I was ready. But I, my mama was alive at the time and I, she had been sick and I went to her house and I, I sat at the foot of her bed and I, I told her. And because, you know, she's always been a stable person. I lived in the same house for 18 years. And so she didn't, she wasn't quick to move. So in my mind, I'm thinking, mom's not going to like this. She's going to say, no, be still and no, just be still. And I walked in that room and I said, mom, God might be calling me to Texas, but I want to hear what you got to say about it. And my mama had been sick that weekend. She sat straight up in her bed and she said, Cheryl, you were born for this baby. I don't think she's ever used those words to me before. But she said, you were born. I'm telling you, God has anointed you. You are born. She didn't know where that would leave her. She didn't know if that meant we would separate. But I thank God for a mother who did not take her first instinct to think about her. But she thought about what was I born for? Mothers, we got to know my child. I love my child, but I want what God wants for them more than what I want for them. And if you try to do it any other way, it's called manipulation. That wasn't in my notes either. He that have an ear to hear, let him hear. But my mama sat up and she said, you were born. She saw, well, she saw something. She, she started telling me who I was. But what she didn't know is who all I was going to become. Yeah. But if I, if I wanted to know who I was going to become, I, I didn't go to my mama for that. Yeah. I went to the God yeah. that tucked it all inside of me. You understand, you got stuff inside of you that's destined to wake up in 2024. Before the clock strikes midnight in 2025, something is going to wake up. And you, and you know what? You're going to feel like, what is this? It's a new thing, but it's an old thing. I said, it's a new thing, but it's an old thing. It's new to you, but God said, that's old to me. Because I put that in you before the foundation of the world was laid. Thank him right now for what your eyes haven't seen. Thank him for what your ears have not heard. Woo! So some of us need to forgive our mentors because we done got mad at them because you ain't, you ain't telling me what I can do. That ain't my job. My job is to pray for you so that you get an ear to hear so that you can hear God tell you what you have inside of you. See, we get lazy today. We want to blame it on mentors. When I came up, you didn't have mentors. Or at least you didn't call them that. You had pastors who came to the stand every Sunday morning, opened up the
the word and preach the word to you. And it was your responsibility to rightly divide the word of God and say, that's for me. And that has challenged me. I'm going to be better because of the word. Now we want to go see who we can. Who can I pay to be my mentor? Oh, you're quiet. You're real quiet right now. I ain't scared of you, though. Listen, if you don't know, I'm from Detroit. I have gangster on hands. Okay. I'm telling you, y'all seen a new thing. I, I mean, but there is, there is a part of me that I would jack you up. And then I'll call for backup. Because I got friends in the neighborhood. Hello? Okay. Holy Spirit, please have your way in here. But we do, we get lazy. We don't want to pray. We want to come up and ask people to pray for us. Will you pray for me? Will you fast for me? Will you go on a seven day fast for me? Fast for yourself. Come on, shake somebody and tell them we got to wake up. This ain't what the church is. This is not what God has called us to be. Thank God for mentors. I never really had one. What I had was, I, maybe I did, but it was from afar. I had people that loved me. And when I needed to know the truth, they would tell me the truth. But they didn't guide me every step of the way. When we first came to build the Potter's House of North Dallas, I thought, okay, we're, we're, a, we're an extension of of the main campus and they're gonna come and Bishop's gonna tell me everything and he's gonna show me the vision and make it plain and write it and, and uh, a, a year later I was like okay he's gonna tell me <laughs> three years later he come and preach and bless us and go back out and Five years later, I'm waiting. I got my pen. I got my, 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 my paper. I got my spirit open, God. I'm ready to just talk to me, Lord. And, and what? We're about to be 14 years later. <laughs> and all he told us was to do was build a church. Build a church. Build a church. And we were able to do that because we had our own. No, y'all ain't here. There's got to be something in you. While I thank God for the anointing in your life and the anointing in your life and the anointing, I cannot sit around and just wait for you to be so anointed that you tell me what to do. I got my own. Fortunately for us, we came like we were a church in a box. We had already pastored and we came and, and, and we when, as we came, everybody grabbed hold of whatever they, whatever they were good at. And you know what I love about this church is that 14 years later, we, 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 we got titles and we got assignments and we got, we got job descriptions. But at the end of the day, if we have to take off every title and, and, and go clean the bathroom or, or go do something that, that might feel like it's beneath us, we will do that because we are grateful just to have our hands in any part of what God is doing in this church. His glory is in this church. His power is in this church. And the fact that he would let me have a microphone to talk to y'all on a Sunday morning, that is still my honor. And the minute it ain't your honor, I've told every one of them, the minute it's not an honor to you anymore, then you can't do it anymore because it is an honor to serve in the house of God. Y'all done got me so off my text. But we got to forgive our mentors because, because at the end of the day, God said, listen, listen, I'm the one that called you. Don't get confused. We honor people. We do. We do. And I, I, I honor Bishop for hearing God and saying, plant this church. But when it's all said and done, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. 
be in your life. I know we got people that help us, but the minute you put your, your trust in human people, in flesh, flesh will fail you. The minute that you lean on something other than God, God will send somebody to knock the legs out from underneath it, and you'll find yourself way down here. I'm telling you, I, I, honor is beautiful. We have to honor. It's, that's a principle in God, but when it's all said and done, he is the visionary. He is this is his church and he said the gates of hell will not prevail against his church so we got to forgive people we've tried to hold people responsible we want to blame them some of you are mad right now because you feel like they didn't tell you the right thing to do well what did God tell you to do what did he tell you oh shoot that means I got to go back to hearing God means I got to go back to praying. I got to go back to falling out. I, I got to go back to doing all of those things. And we're waiting on the right mentor. We're waiting on the right coach. But your job is not to find the right mentor. Your job is to find the birth canal of faith. And by faith, that is how we move things that are in the heavens down to things that are in the earth. By faith, we move something from the supernatural down into the natural. So instead of building up everybody else, you need to build up your faith because whatever God has released for you up here, if it's going to ever get down here, there has to be a birth canal that is called faith that it has got to come through. You got It's got to push its way through all of your doubts. It's got to push its way through all of your the feelings of being unqualified it's got to push its way through it's got to push until the dream that God has declared in heaven is now manifest here on the earth it comes out of the spirit realm into the natural realm Ephesians 1 and 3 says he hath somebody say hath he hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly Places. So do, do this right here. Every spiritual blessing you need is in heavenly places. And we walk around in life. Oh God, I don't know what I'm going to do. Lord, I just need you to show me my purpose, my destiny. And then somebody else over here jumps into theirs. And you're like, God, you did that for them. What, what's going on? Why can't? And God is saying, because you're so busy crying. What I need you to do is to start praying by faith. I need you to strengthen your inner man. I need you to develop that birth canal because everything he's done for you, it's already done and it's in heavenly places. He's in, he, in other words, he's, he has already released it in the spirit. I, I said he's already released it in the spirit, but that birth canal of faith is how you're going to get it to the place that you can lay hands on it, that your eyes can see it right now. Your eyes can't see it because it's in the spirit. Your ears can't hear it because it's in the spirit. It's not even entered into your heart that God is going to do it but it's there anyhow because he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places that means right there here's what he said that means it's prepared and it is prepared for who it is prepared for those that love him somebody shout prepared that means it's already in existence. It's already finished. It's already in place. You can walk around and moan and groan and cry and want to be somebody else all of your life. But God says what I have for you, it's already prepared. And if you are going to receive that, I've got to reveal that in your spirit. And when you see it in your spirit, it's just a matter of time until it manifests outwardly. Ask any of these mothers that were up here with their babies today. There was a day that baby was in seed form inside of them but after the process after the process after the, after the pushing after the birthing after all of the things that they had to go through now we all can see what was hidden inside of them there are some things that are hidden in your spirit 
and it is already prepared. That's why old folks used to say, I got a feeling that everything is gone. Have you ever said that? I got, what's making you feel that? I don't know. I just know in my spirit, I, it's going to be all right. You have proof? No. You have evidence? No. Got any sign at all? No. Got a contract? No. Not yet. You got an offer? No. You got any reason? No. All I got is a feeling. You ever had a feeling, just a feeling? You, you, you look at your circumstance and you're like, I don't know. I, I, it, don't look, it don't look good, but something in you says, go ahead and lay down. Tell the devil you're going to bed because you trust God. The, sometimes the greatest act of faith you can do is go to bed. Woo, y'all should have helped me better than that. You're happy and you don't even know why you're happy because nothing in your life has really changed. But there is a witness that gets in your spirit. Anybody ever had a witness get in your spirit? He just blows into the room and you're sitting there all upset and all worried. And all of a sudden you're like, shoot, let's go get a hamburger or ice cream or something because it's going to be all right. That is the peace that passes all of your under. Understanding. It's praying yourself out of one dimension and moving over into another. It's praying until the invisible becomes visible, until the intangible becomes tangible, until the unseen can now be seen. It's praying until what has been bound on earth is bound in heaven and what has been loosed on earth is now loosed in heaven. It's praying in the natural until what you are looking for is available. Write it within your hand's reach. And once you walk in the spirit, you become aware of peace that you didn't even know you had. You become aware of victory that you didn't even know you had. You become aware of prosperity that you felt like you never had. You become aware of power. Somebody say power. power. God can't reveal to you all the power that he's given you at the same time. Because you will electrocute yourself after death. He can't do it. Because he has to prove you in power. I said he has to prove you in power. Anybody that just craves power, I'm scared of you. You're going to be a dictator. We ain't having dictators. Woo, tell somebody we're free and we ain't having dictators. Okay, y'all, I'm going to stop right there because my flesh wants to go somewhere else that God may not be pleased, but he might be. I'm going to find out. If it gives me the, if it gives me the go ahead, I'm, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. Um, telling you, as you walk with him, He'll release to you and show you you got power to do this. You got power. You can speak into that situation. Your child is going crazy. Speak into it. Well, I'm just going to let my, I'm just, where's your, where's your kids at? Oh, they home. It's Sunday morning. They home? Yeah, you know, I, I'm just going to let my kids, I don't feel like I need to tell them what they do, what they need to do. And I'm going to give them that space, that little bit of space you know, to do their own thing and, and just let them find God. You finna find God right here in my house is what. The Bible, we can't give the devil an inch, y'all. Are you kidding? You're in my house, you're sleeping? You got a roof over your head? You got food on your table? You got clothes on your back? 
and I'm just going to let you have space. You can have space, but you're going to find it in the house of God because this is who we are. This is what we do. This is the God that we serve. Now, when you turn 18 and you can pay your own rent, I'm still going to pray over you because you got to serve God. But I'm going to tell you, at least while you're in my house, I'm going to get you into his house. See, only God has the ability to help us to gain access to what he has put in us. And it's got to be done through him. Well, well, how do we get our hands on what God has put into us? You develop enough faith. That does not mean that you got to go crazy, driving yourself insane, saying, I got to have faith, 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 I got to No. Faith is simply seeing the unseeable. It's like this. Bishop saw the wall was down. The wall was still up, but he saw it was down. I saw Carpet, there was, there was, the floor was there, but in spite of what I saw with the natural eye, my spirit saw, I already saw it. Anytime you can see what is not there, faith is not struggling to believe God. Faith is seeing the unseen. Come on, y'all. And when you can see it, you're anointed to go after it. If you can't see it, stay right where you are until you can see it. But the minute you see it, let nothing separate you from what you see in your spirit. You develop enough faith. You go through enough, you know, you go through enough labor pains, you go through enough personal crisis that you finally grow up and quit asking people to deliver you from. Come on. You might be able to ask somebody, can you deliver me out of this? And you probably have done that. I have done that. But there came a point in my walk with God where God said, not another day. If I don't put food on your table, you won't have it. If I don't open that door, it won't open. But I want to use you in a great way. So I've got to build your faith in a great way. And I finally came to the point that stopped, I stopped reaching out to be rescued. Father, help us to grow in you to the point that we stop reaching and saying, I don't know if, I don't know if you're going to come through on, on, on time. I, I, I'll ask them. I'm helping. Tell somebody you gotta push through those moments. You gotta push through the pain. Listen, I might lose a friend, but I'm still gonna push through the pain. You probably will think I'm crazy, but I'm gonna push through the pain. You might even think I'm strange. You already told me I was, but I'm gonna keep pushing through the pain. How bad do you want this next dimension in God? Do you want it bad enough to push through whatever you gotta? Do you want it bad enough to be different? Do you want it bad enough to cut all these voices off that you are allowing to speak in your life? And then you get confused because I got all these voices speaking in my life. Well, shut them down. Because you'll never become aware of what God has for you as long as you keep your ears open to everybody. You've got to be able to hear on another level. Look at somebody and tell them, open your ears to hear on another level. 
There is another frequency that you gotta tap into. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but God said to tell somebody, there is another frequency that's got your name on it. You've been practicing opening your ears, but God says, I need to tweak you and I need to take you up a bit. So keep listening for that on that other frequency. In order for you to push out the promises of God, you have to turn your ear to that new frequency because I'm gonna talk to you up here. And you've got to get in the position for me to give you what's inside of you. you got to get in the position to hear me on another frequency. You've got to focus. You've got to breathe in. You've, anybody ever give birth to a baby? You've got to focus. you got to breathe in. you got to breathe out. you got to be prepared to deal with pain. you got to be prepared to be uncomfortable. And I'm going to tell you something. Don't be afraid when the pain start coming because that is a sign. Pain is nature's alarm clock to the expectant mother. It tells her, baby, it's about to happen. God is about to take what's in you and get it out of you. Pain says, my delivery is near. If you've been in pain, it's because you're about to birth another dimension in God. When you birth it, you can hold here what you only felt in here. So I felt, I feel like if things gonna be all right. But if you birth, if you if you develop that birth canal, then you're gonna be able to hold the evidence in your hand. Oh, it's all right. See, see, God did come through for me. But in the in the process, somebody say respect the process. You must first. Isolate yourself. You must go through a season of detachment. Disconnect yourself from certain things. Put some people out. I love you. God bless you. Call me in the ear. Put some people out. Turn down the voices of people. Turn up the ability to hear from God. Because you've got to be able to hear what he's saying in your spirit. It's, we want to hear it. Will you just prophesy to me? Because that, that's because you want to hear it with these ears. But it's only when you hear it in your inner ear that the inner power rises up to meet what you heard in your inner ear. And now you have the ability to walk out what, what God has given you. Why is that so important? Because... You've, you've got, and I'm almost done, you've got to know that the only thing that you have permission to birth is what God put in your spirit. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's why you got to be careful. Just because you see the girls you hang out with, the brothers you hang out with, well, I'm, going to, I'm stepping out and I'm going to open a slushy business. All right? Maybe God gave them permission to do that. But if he didn't give you permission, you were getting ready to waste your money. Oh, and y'all look like you got so much money to waste. I, I can't do that. So what that means is I got to tap into God because I got to know what he's put in my spirit. Because if I know he's put it in my spirit, that means I got the permission to go after it. And that means I'm going to obtain it. And that means God is going to bless it. But you can only have permission to do what God has built in your spirit for you to do. You can only push out what God has put in. So whatever he put in you before the foundation of the world, that's what you have the power to push out. And furthermore, we need to know that whatever is in us, it has been in us the entire time. It's just that once we see it, it, it begins to, the internal starts working its way out into the external. You were anointed. 
anointed before you ever knew you were anointed. You were ordained before you ever knew you were ordained. You were called by Almighty God before you knew you were called. You were empowered long before you ever got your first prophecy. You were already somebody before anybody said that, hey, yay. No, you were already some before you ever got your first contract, before you ever got your first platform or your first business partner, your first title or position or the first investor into your company, before you ever picked up and played your first instrument, you were anointed to play it because he put it in you in eternity. And now it's just a matter of time. Woo! Touch somebody and tell them it's a matter of time. Because whatever God does in eternity, it will, it will, it will. Ooh, put that in the atmosphere. It will, it will, it will. It will, it will, it will. It will, it will. It really will come to pass. Jeremiah, I formed you before I knew you. I, 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 before your mama knew your daddy, I knew you. And I formed you while you were in her belly. And while you were in there, I formed you and I knew you and I sanctified. And some of you wonder why you always get caught. Did you ever wonder why you always got caught? It don't matter. Everybody in your house can do wrong, but if you do it, Cheryl, you know why? Because he sanctified me in her womb. He said, I ordained you. But nobody in my family believed in women preachers. He said, I ordained you. I marked you. Look at somebody and tell them you're marked. I set you apart. I branded you. I put my signature on your life, which meant that you would never be able to just be ordinary. You will never be average. I touched your life because I meant for you to be different. I meant for you to be a misfit. Anybody know what it's like to be a misfit? You never fit in the clique and you never fit in the club. You were a misfit, but when we say misfit, that looks like it has a negative connotation to it, but there's some positive things about being a misfit. Most of the time, misfits are creative people. Most of the time, misfits are resilient people. They know how to get back up can. They have device per, uh, de divisive perspectives. They have a pioneer spirit. Usually when you're a misfit, you have something in you that is a pioneer because you're like, I don't, I can't get in that club. Let me go over here and build my own club. That's because there's a pioneer spirit in you. Usually whenever you are a misfit, you have empathy for people that the average person doesn't have because you know what it is like to be in pain. You have a uniqueness about you when you're a misfit. And all of that right there can lead to an authentic life. Yeah. Whew. Tell somebody, I'm glad I didn't fit. God said, I marked you. I branded you. I put my signature on your life, which meant you would never be normal. Look at somebody and say, tell him, I told you you were strange. I told you. I marked your life so that you wouldn't fit with anybody but me. He said, I wanted you. And I made sure that I, I put my touch on you. Look at somebody and tell him you're marked, you're marked. If it's a woman, tell him you're a marked woman. If it's a man, tell him you're a marked man. Before you got here, he marked you. Before you, before you ever struggled in any area of your life, you were already marked to come, o come over it and to overcome it. It's a mark that you cannot get rid of. Why? Because the callings 
and the election of God, the selection of God is without repentance. That doesn't mean that, 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 he ain't talking about you. He's saying, if I call you, I will never repent from calling you. So that will be on you the rest of your life. And what I love about him is that he knew when we passed from eternity through the birth canal of our mamas, he knew. He told us all of this in eternity. You don't even know what you know. I said, you don't even know what you know. Because he talked to me in eternity. So that when I got out here in time, I would recognize that voice. And when I was about to go into this way, all of a sudden there was a voice that said, no, 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 no. You're better than that. You're not born for that. But I wanna, I wanna try, it looks like it's fun. Go ahead, make your bed in hell, I'll be right there. Go as high as you wanna go. But when you get too high, I'm gonna be right there. Because I marked you. I talked to you in eternity. I told you who you were. He knew that when we passed into the earth realm, he knew that we would possibly forget what he said to us. Because being birthed is, is a traumatic experience. That's why a baby sleeps for hours and hours and hours after it has been birthed. He knew that we would possibly forget that he told us, you are the victory. My hand is on you. Whenever you go through a storm, don't fear because I'm going to be there. He knew. He knew that whatever we would face in life that we might rock and we might reel. So he told us who we were. He knew that we would lose consciousness between heaven and earth. Hmm. So he told us before the foundation of the world, you bad. That's why Sometimes you just look in the mirror and you say, listen, I know I don't look bad, but I'm gonna tell you, I feel bad right now. If I could break dance, I'd break dance. Right but I would break something, so I'm not gonna do that. He marked you in your spirit. Oh, y'all, please. He marked you in your, people called you troublemaker, but you weren't a troublemaker. Why can't you just go to church and enjoy this? Why can't you enjoy this church? I don't know. My mom would say, why you, why you want to go to another church? I don't know, mom. They sing this song called He is Lord. And I love it. And we sing page 317 and page 444. And, <laughs> and I know all of those songs by heart because when the preacher was preaching, I had nothing to do but look through the phone, the, through the man, what do you call it? Hymnal. But even then, God was putting things in my spirit. He was putting things, when I wasn't even paying attention, he was putting something in me. Woo! He marked you in your spirit. Because of that, because of his mark on your life, you could never settle for just anything. You could never settle in wrong places. You could never settle in wrong relationships. You could never settle in the things that unmarked people could settle in. Woo! Aren't you glad? Is there anybody besides me that's glad that he marked you and would not let you settle? You tried to settle in that relationship. And then you look at them today and you're like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Woo! You may have tried it, but you didn't settle in it before you ever got here. He marked you. He said, you can't settle in what they're settling in. You can't lay, in, lay down in the same mess they're laying in. You can't lay in what your co-workers are laying in. You can't laugh at what they're laughing at. You can't go where they go. 
You're different. Tell somebody, you're different. He meant for you to be marked. He meant for you to be holy. He meant for you to be misunderstood. He meant for you to be a misfit. He meant for people to look at you and think you were strange. He meant it. That's why when you got into business and stuff and mess that you weren't supposed to be in, the mark kept pulling you out. Lord, thank you. Thank you for pulling us out. The mark called you out of darkness into the marvelous light, like a magnet. You know what a magnet does? There's something in the, um, the magnet that are, and the closer it gets, the more it, and the closer it gets. Because those that he did foreknow, he did also predestinate. The mark has called you into, into order. The mark has called you into a alignment. The mark has called you into repentance over and over again. There's a higher calling on your life. Just look at somebody and tell him he called me. He called me. I, I, I heard him call me. I didn't know what it meant, but I heard him call me. And when I heard that voice in time that I heard when I was in eternity, I was like, man, I'm listening. I'm, I'm all in. Whatever you say, just, just help me. Just help me. Oh, help me. Oh, God. I know people pride themselves on knowing, knowing the word of God. And it's great. We got to know it. But when I didn't know the word, I... I knew the voice. My spirit knew the voice. Why? Because my sheep know my voice. And a stranger they will not follow. He talked to you in eternity so that you could recognize his voice in time. He acquainted me with his voice in eternity. He told me who I was and he started tucking little things all inside of me. You know, like Joseph's brothers, when, when, they, were, when, when, when they were on the outs with him, but they came because they needed him. And he said, go get my father. Go back and get my father. And as they were going back to get the father, Joseph took a handful of blessing and he put it in their pocket and on their way home he just had one of them just happened to reach in their pocket and be like Whoa, where did that come from it was tucked in you for this season there's some stuff that you know God is wanting to do in your life but you don't see how that's because it hasn't been time yet but as he begins to pour out of you what is there? You will become everything he told you yeah. that you will become. And when I hear his voice in time, it reminds me of what I heard him say in eternity. The voice reminds me, this ain't, this ain't who you are. There's more for you than this. Don't you dare quit right now. Uh-uh. That, that right there, that ain't for you, Cheryl. Save your energy. Save your, you've been pre-marked, you've been predestined. You're strange. But think it not strange that you're strange. It reminds me, when I hear his voice in time, it reminds me, God help me. It reminds me that I'm not out here searching for purpose. What's your purpose, God? What is your purpose in my life? I gotta know the purpose of God. What's the purpose of God? Do you know your purpose? But when I hear him, when I'm in time and I hear his voice, how he talked to me in, turn, in eternity, I know that I'm not just looking for purpose. I know that I am purpose. And wherever I go, purpose! has hit the room. Y'all better hear me now. The devil has distracted people for too many years trying to, oh, I gotta find my purpose. When you walk in covenant with God, 
The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Look at somebody and tell him, I ain't searching for purpose. I purpose in motion. Don't waste another day. Letting the devil lie to you and say, oh, you came to this because this ain't the, this ain't the, all things work together. Look at somebody and just ask them, are you as strange as I am? Because strangers can't stop where other people stop. Strangers are not satisfied with what other people are satisfied with. Strangers are sick of media. Strangers don't come to church for the same reason that real strangers come to church for. We don't come to see the, the preacher. We come to hear God. We don't come to hear the music. We come to bring our voice to add it to the, to the sanctuary and fill it with praise. I've got to hear God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but he I'm not here to run to people. Yeah. I'm here to run to God. Yeah. Speak to my heart. Yeah. And God is just saying, if you, if you put just a little more effort in running to me, it's going to be easier for you to hear me than it has ever been for you to hear people. I'm done. I'm, 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 I'm done. And I'm finished. But let me tell you something. Look, look around you at everybody around you. Just look. Everybody you just looked at is a secondary consequence of your church experience. Okay? They ain't why you come. They, it, you don't come for them. You're a secondary consequence. That means you can't be talking to me all throughout church. Do you see what dress he has on? Huh? Ooh, look at that. You see who that? I wonder if he, his name is Boaz. I don't know. Has he got a ring on his finger? And you're like, oh, I need a word from you, Lord. I need a word from you. Right here's your word. Open your eyes. That ain't my word. He counsels us. Oh, how he walks with me. Oh, how he talks with me. He comforts me. He directs me so I've got to hear his voice. You are, I'm, I'm blessed that you're here. I'm blessed that we have fellowship. But you are the secondary consequence. His voice talks to me in earth about what I was in heaven so that I can become on earth everything that he put in me in eternity you're destined for great things but God is calling us to put our ear up to his mouth the next level that you're believing for it ain't coming through people it might eventually work its way, but initially, the initial thing, God said, I want to talk to everybody in this room in another level. This is so great because guess what that means? That means you ain't got to kiss up to nobody. You ain't got to kiss up to nobody. It ain't nothing anybody got to say to you that's more important than what he's got to say to you. Look at somebody and tell him this is an emergency. I gotta get over some things. I've gotta get past some things. I've gotta get beyond some things because God has blessed me and I've gotta be what he wants me to. I got a family to raise. I got a business to run. I got decisions to make. I got things, I got 
people to lead. I got questions that have got to be answered. So I've got to hear his voice. Every answer is in his voice. Every decision I've got to make can be found in his voice. Every problem I'm facing in life can be resolved by his voice. I'll make the right, you will make the right choice. If you can hear his voice, you'll know who to marry. You'll know what house is yours. You'll know right then it's time to sow that seed. You'll know, oh, that's my harvest. No, I don't have to sow my harvest. My harvest is what I enjoy. My seed is what I sow. So you come to church and you can give without giving grudgingly. What's the word? Huh? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You don't have to give like that because you're like, listen, nobody, God is not, is not requiring that part because that's my harvest. But this right here is my seed. So I got to give that to God. When you know his voice, he'll show you what belongs to you. He'll show you what house is yours. The bank might not think it. The ma- bank might deny you of it. But if God, has, if God has ever told you something belonged to you, is there anybody that knows that kind of God? <laughs> Look around this room. For you who might be doubting today or you might be saying, but they told me I couldn't. They told me I wouldn't. They told me that I shouldn't. Look at our hands. They told us the same thing. But the problem is that there was a higher voice that told us it was ours. So hearing him, it might be a luxury for you, but it's a necessity for me because I live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God standing with me.